Okay, in the uh, prior video, we had uh, completed the create view form, which is what you see on the screen here. What we need to do now is write the logic for this uh, submit button that, if you recall at the bottom of the form, it said create. So that is a um, submission of the form, um, and it's going to go back to our create method that is handled as a post, not a get. So let's go back to our product controller and um, here's the create method that is responding to a post. And uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to add another um, uh, argument here. And this has to be um, um, an attribute. Attributes start with an opening square brace. And then I am going to use the bind option. And um, here I'm going to uh, define and exclude uh, value. So you say exclude colon equals and then you specify the name of a variable or a property um, ID and then I need to close my parenthesis and uh, close my attribute. Close my attribute. Um, and then I want to have um, a variable called prod uh, to create and um, I want that to be uh, a regular old product as P-R-O-D, as product. Um, and then let's go ahead and continue this to the next line. Let me explain what I've just done there. Um, the, uh, the, form, uh, the form is going to uh, return back a product, and that's what is called here. But I want that product not to include the ID attribute, or the, excuse me, the ID um, uh, parameter and the reason why I want to exclude the ID parameter is as I said before the database adds the ID auto generates the ID so this says that I would like to bind to the product um, and I want to exclude the ID that gives me basically something that I could manipulate um, and store in my database now let me go off screen here and uh, grab some uh, code so I can paste it in here um, so I'm basically going to take this try catch block and replace it with a new version. There we go. All right. Now, the first thing that I do is I take a look to see if my model state is valid. If it is not valid, then I want to just go back to my view. Now, why would the model state not be valid? It would not be valid if an error was detected. So if I have an error, I'm going to return back to my view. If I don't have an error, then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and do a little business logic. I'm going to see if the reorder level of my product to create, see if that's less than zero. And if that's the case, then I want to add a model error to my model state, which is part of the view data. So you can see we're going to our view data, adding uh, to the model state an error. The error says, uh, is associated with the um, the property reorder level and the message is reorder level must be greater than or equal to zero. Then I return to the view. Otherwise, I go ahead and I add the product to create um, to my data context and then I save my data context. Um, and then I go back to my index page. If something goes wrong within uh, this try block, then I just return back to my view. So what I've done is I put a little business logic right in here. Um, I'm going to say that this is probably not a good place to put the business logic. This is actually part of the model. It's not part of the controller. Uh, but I placed it here anyway. I'll show you how to improve upon that later. Um, and then we have this error here. Now, you might ask, well, what kind of error can that be? Well, that, that is an error that is automatically generated if we have a type mismatch. For example, we have um, a reorder quantity, which is an integer. If I type a non-integer value in there, that is a data type error, then that will automatically create an error for me. Now, I'm going to run this, and it's not going to work. Um, I know ahead of time. <laughs> Usually, I don't know ahead of time. But it's not going to work. But I'm going to run it anyway so I can um, make a point. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, here we are. Now, it's actually going to work the first time because I'm not going to make a mistake. So, I'm going to create new here. And I get my create new up here. My product name is called Bill's uh, Beans. And um, 
it is supplied by the New England Seafood Cannery and it is a um, seafood I don't know what a bean seafood is um, this quantity is like um, it comes in um, one per box one bean per box uh, the unit price is one whatever um, the units in stock is two whatever uh, the units on order are zero the reorder level is one and uh, discontinued now this is a boolean so discontinued is um, false so let's go ahead and create this uh, this did hopefully was created successfully let's look at it down here at the bottom there's Bill's beans there are the details of Bill's beans okay and um, let's go back to the list and uh, there's Bill's Beans again at the bottom and let's edit Bill's Beans and there we can edit it. Notice it created a supplier ID automatically uh, and a category ID automatically. Uh, again, um, in, in the create um, view I put drop down boxes here and this would be this should be drop down boxes also but notice that the actual numeric values were added there during the create. So that worked okay. Uh, let's go back and uh, create another one. This time we're going to create an error. So here we have product name um, Bill's uh, Beans uh, number two. And um, let's just leave these alone uh, box. And um, I'm going to make the unit price a, a, a non-numeric value. Units in stock, non-numeric. Uh, units on order non-numeric, reorder level non-numeric. Um, I'll make this discontinued true. Um, and let's try the create. And now what we get here, this is the error I expected. Notice I'm in the create ASPX, so I'm in the view for create. And it's telling me that the drop-down list identified by supplier ID doesn't really exist. There is no view data item with a key supplier ID of this type. The reason why I showed this to you is because I want to reinforce the fact that we're not dealing with ASPX um, ASP form models. That is, we don't have a view state. Um, we are responsible for restoring the view state. And as it turns out that when I found the error uh, inside my product controller here, um, and returned to the view, actually it came from up here, um, I, I failed to um, reestablish values for those lists. So that's a problem. So let me stop my application here. And what I'm going to do